It's been six years since the first time Elon Musk revealed SpaceX's next-gen rocket, and the company has thoroughly redesigned Starship multiple times. Compared to the first rough prototype, later prototypes are becoming more and more refined and well-looked with smoother metal walls and subtler welds. It raises the question then, how did SpaceX change a rough Starship to a well-detailed, smooth-surfaced machine? Let's find out the answer in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Having said what I said, SpaceX's new upgrades on Starship's welding changed everything. Basically, welding is a fabrication process whereby two or more parts are fused together by means of heat, pressure, or both, forming a joint as the parts cool. The initial design of Starship was to use carbon fiber for everything, from the body of the spacecraft to the pressurized liquid oxygen tanks. They even built prototypes of the parts, and SpaceX's founder, Elon Musk, shared their photos on social media. But SpaceX's engineers changed their minds and decided to build Starship from stainless steel instead of carbon fiber. It's because stainless steel is much cheaper than carbon fiber. Going with stainless steel also allows SpaceX to work on Musk's dream of a regenerative heat shield. However, stainless steel is an iron-based alloy containing variable amounts of chromium, which is the element that gives stainless steel its rust-proof reputation. The degree of chromium can vary from 11 to 30 percent, with each variation having slightly different chemical attributes that influence how it performs. Stainless steel retains heat very efficiently, which makes welding it a bit more difficult especially for the novice welder. When faced with excessive welding heat, stainless steel can warp from the high temperatures and even distort during the cooling process. It can also be very aesthetically unforgiving as it displays every blemish and scratch mark that's left behind. Similarly, if you've ever welded on a metal table, you know to take precautions before starting because it scratches so easily. All of that is to say that stainless steel is not very easy when it comes to hiding mistakes and tends to favor the more experienced welder. And in the case of SpaceX, the early Starship prototypes used a welding method called flux core. Flux cord arc welding uses heat generated by an electric arc to fuse base metal in the weld joint area. This arc is struck between the metallic workpiece and the continuously fed tubular cord consumable filler wire with both the wire and the metallic workpiece melting together to form a weld joint. The shielding gas, where used, protects the weld pool from oxidation and is usually provided externally from a high-pressure gas cylinder. Weld metal is also shielded by the slag formation from flux melting. Thus, the process informally known as dual shield welding was primarily developed for the welding of structural steels. The most commonly used shielding gases are carbon dioxide or blends of argon and carbon dioxide. The most frequently used blend is 75% argon to 25% carbon dioxide. This dual shield method is preferred for welding thicker materials or for out of position welding. This process, when used in identical settings, delivers welds with more consistent mechanical properties and with fewer defects than other processes. The continuously fed tubular electrode also allows for higher production rates than solid wire or stick electrodes. However, the gas shielded method may not be suitable for use in windy conditions, as the disturbance to gas shielding could result in reduced weld metal properties. And you definitely remember, at that point, SpaceX didn't really have a proper factory, just a fairly large tent. This was also confirmed by Elon Musk. Our main issue here in Boca is that it can get very windy, which affects weld arc and steel melt pool. And so, with the most of the welding being done outside by welders that had no rocket experience, it's no surprise, Starship looked so bad. The welds on the first Mark I prototype were heavily corroded, with cracks and rough edges on the surface. In order to improve these welds, SpaceX started grinding them down until they were flush with the surface. In theory, each weld should be as strong as the surrounding metal, but the initial Starship test proved that it wasn't. Mark I exploded when one of the horizontal welds failed and sent the bulkhead flying. As a result, and for Starship to exist, SpaceX had to make some significant upgrades to the following Starship prototype. Everyday Astronaut, back in 2019, asked Elon in a tweet that, 
Is there any substantial difference in welding slash manufacturing techniques between these bulkheads and Mark 1 slash Mark 2? Also, lol. And Elon Musk replied, almost everything is different. These parts are stamped versus manually bump formed and tip tig welded versus flux core. Higher precision, stronger joints, and 20% mass reduction. Since then, each ring was made from thinner single sheets of stainless steel, which required much less welding. In addition, the tip tig welding method is a better solution. This is known for its precision, which is why it's the go-to process for projects that demand clean, controlled welds especially on less forgiving materials like stainless steel alloys or aluminum. Besides that, they also moved from 301 to 304L stainless steel, which was much more resistant to corrosion when welding. The 301 welds are slightly stronger at higher temperatures, but at cryogenic temperatures, the strength of the 304 welds is four times stronger. But what about 304L? at minus 196 degrees centigrade, which is close to the temperature of liquid oxygen, the 304L provides an additional 25% of toughness over the regular 304 steel. There's also one more advantage of 304L steel over both 301 and 304, and it's related to its low carbon content. When heated to high temperatures, for instance by welding, the chrome and carbon react to form areas that are more susceptible to both cracks and corrosion. SpaceX's motivation behind the switch from 301 to 304L stainless steel seems to be all about welding. Even though 304L itself is weaker, its welds at cryogenic temperatures are much stronger and much less prone to corrosion. This switch should allow SpaceX to keep the welds of Starship as they are when finished, without any complicated, expensive, or even impossible after-treatment. But everything really became better when SpaceX moved on to laser welding for many of Starship's sections. Laser welders feature a fiber laser. These types of lasers are more than perfect for welding parts and machinery made of stainless steel. But in order to really improve the strength of each weld, another process has to be done. You see, when Starship's stainless steel is produced in its factory, it goes through a process called cold rolling, the process of strengthening steel by changing its shape without using heat. Instead of heat, mechanical stress is used to change the structure of the metal. Strain hardening can then increase the metal's strength by up to 20% and can also improve a metal's surface finish. Currently, with increasing confidence in the current design of Starship and Super Heavy, SpaceX appears to be looking for ways to streamline and simplify manufacturing while simultaneously optimizing Starship's design. And by drastically reducing the number of individual welds and to a slightly lesser degree the total length of welds required, should also reduce the number of possible points of failure and the time needed for weld inspection and repair. Until then, we can still see a beautiful masterpiece as it is today. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.